Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to do a quick comparison using the Valspar Reserve in place of the Infinity. Some people are experiencing some difficulty getting the Infinity, so Lowe's sells this usually right next to where the Infinity is. And so I decided I would test it for those who are having trouble obtaining the Infinity. Um, I'm not going to do the mixing on camera because I already have a video for that, so I'll link that below. I use the exact same ratios, which is three parts of this to one part of the Josonia. So I'm just going to kind of show you how it performs, um, and so I'll talk through that. So I just wanted to show you what the can looks like. Let me turn the flash off for a second. Um, I don't know that that really helped you, but that's what it looks like. It's base C untinted semi-gloss interior. And I did speak with the paint manager at Milo's. She said that they're not discontinuing the Infinity, they're just having a hard time keeping it in stock. Um, but I was also told that this is basically them rebranding the Infinity with the same recipe. So not sure how true all of that is, but I decided it would be a good test for those of you who are having a hard time getting the Infinity. So we'll do a small seven inch hexagon, and then if that is successful, we'll use those same colors on a 12 inch round. All right, stay tuned. Okay, so first up is gonna be our seven inch hexagon. So we're laying down our house paint. In this video, I used Walmart Satin Color Place as my pillow. I do have a mixing video, as I mentioned below, where I use Glidden Premium in eggshell. So, um, but I will still list the mixing video for you. First color is Permanent Violet Dark by Golden, and it's a fluid acrylic. The second one is Salmon Gum by Matisse, and that's the Matisse Fluid. I forget what they call it. And then third is Af African Jade, which is a pigment from Color Art. It's a beautiful color. Fourth is Cypress from Holbein, which is a heavier body paint or at least a medium body paint so I tried to use kind of a diverse group of paints to test this out and this last pigment is glass wings from color arts as part of the bling it line um, and then we have phthalo turquoise from golden and then the last paint color that I mixed up with this pouring medium is Australian Sky Blue from Matisse, and that's a, that's a fluid as well. So the reason I mixed up several different brands and several different um, types is I wanted to see how you know it responded to everything. Um, the cell activator we're using is Atelier Blue Black. So this tester tile was just really kind of like, okay, on something you know smaller seven inches or so how will this perform so I'm gonna blow this out with the world's smallest blower uh, just because it's kind of a small surface and I kinda know what to expect from that see how the colors perform I also had not used the sky blue from Matisse that I had just gotten and I had been wanting to use it in something and I've been having this um, kind of peach and uh, teal turquoise color palette ruminating in my head so I figured I would just go ahead and try these colors for this test I don't know why I decided to do the permanent violet dark it doesn't really go, <laughs> go with any of this but I because I mixed it for this test um, I used it so you see me breaking the surface tension there with the turkey baster and now I'm just kind of trying to embellish a little bit because part of the challenge with using the smallest blower is it has a very narrow opening and so sometimes you have like what looks like a starfish instead of like a flower <laughs> but most of this is going to end up flying off anyway as we tilt so my impressions so far at this point um, are that this is a perfectly clear untinted base I tested it, I put it on a white piece of cardboard and a black piece of cardboard and it dried perfectly clear. The consistency is nearly the same as the Infinity. 
I did not add any uh, golden gel gloss, which I sometimes like to add to my mix for the sake of this test because I wanted to keep it as bare bones as possible. So you saw on that seven inch, it performed really well. The tile turned out, that seven inch tile turned out really beautiful. I've already resined it, it dried nicely. Um, so, so far I'm impressed. Now, just um, a, a note going into this 12 inch round is, um, if you follow my channel, you know that I am actively working on going bigger with my blooms. So doing a 12 inch bloom is way outside of my wheelhouse at this point. So I would not judge the performance of the Valspar based on the outcome of the bloom, um, but rather I wanna see how it performs, how it mixes with other colors, um, how the blowout does, you know, do the cells seem to hold their shape, all of those things. And some of those things, a great deal of those things have to do with the artist's ability to, <laughs> but I am pleasantly surprised at how this turns out. This is one of the largest blooms I've done um, successfully on a 12 inch surface. So I'm pretty excited about it. So we're gonna use the same colors. I almost left the permanent violet dark out just because I really want the focus of this to be kind of the peach and the turquoise and the teal. But again, I, I mixed up all these paints for the purpose of this, so I decided to just put it in there anyway. So again, we're using the same pillow paint. Um, the one thing I noticed with this, and you'll see there is one particular part where I really tried to spin off something that I didn't like or tried to tilt it off. That's really the only issue I've had with this pillow paint is if you over tilt or over spin, you get a little crazing um, or flocculation rather on the side, only the sides, which I think is that's probably true of any paint. So um, that's not necessarily the Valspar, that's more of a pillow thing. Um, so that's just for what it's worth. I, I get that if I over tilt or over spin anything. So I don't think that that's necessarily a representation of the paint, but sometimes it's just, you can only push paint so far before the pigments kind of break apart. So we've got the permanent violet dark down. This is the salmon gum on top of it. In some of these I used way larger puddles because I only had like a smidge of paint left and I didn't want to waste it. Um, so I maybe shouldn't have done that, but that is what I did. So here comes the African Jade from Color Art. I think this color is so beautiful. And here's another example where I had just a little bit, so I just went ahead and finished it up. But I did use probably too much paint for this size surface. I'm kind of notorious for that. Either too much or not enough, but I err on the side of too much, and then sometimes I'm like, whoa. So here's Cypress by Holbein. This is a gorgeous color. It is a beautiful color green. It's almost like a thalo green meets uh, a bluish green. It's a beautiful color. It's hard to describe. You know, you see all these colors, and you're like, well, that looks very similar to this, and I'm sure that it is similar in some ways to something else, but it is a gorgeous color. I'm kind of messy with my puddles, so. But I hope that this will serve as a, a good alternative if you are having trouble getting the infinity and that is the preferred pouring medium that you use. This is Glass Wings from Color Art. I adore this color. I want to put it on everything. It is a gorgeous color. This is part of um, the Bling It set, not the most recent one, Ancient Treasures, but the one that's called Glass Wings. And um, don't forget, you can save 20% on anything on the Color Art site using my code um, below, which is Mandy1120. Um, just outstanding stuff. Both of those bling it sets are incredible. And then our Thalo Turquoise, which is always a fan favorite of 
everyone's. Um, I love that color. You can tell I'm just like putting it everywhere. And you can see when you put the phthalo turquoise down how it's uniquely more blue than the cypress. So when you first lay down the cypress, you're like, oh, this might be more like a turquoise or a phthalo turquoise. But I do feel like I used a little bit too much of the sky blue in this color just because it is an opaque color and it it can be very domineering. But I do like it. I think if I were to go back... I would probably use maybe two thirds of that because you'll see when we blow it out it it's a beautiful color though but it totally kind of dominated the center again we're using the atelier blue black cell activator um also i do have a blick affiliate link below you're welcome to shop using the link it helps our channel uh, most of my regular paint, you know, non-pigment, non-metallic, I get from Blick. So all of the Matisse colors, the Cypress color, um, the Atelier, I got from Matisse. I mean, excuse me, I got from Blick. So it's a great resource to find things like that. So I'm just blowing it out a little bit with my mouth so that when I hit it with the hair dryer, I have kind of spread out that puddle a little bit. So on this particular, this is a travel size, I think it's 1200 watts, and I have, I'm using the cool setting with high uh, power, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the right word is for that. So it's on high with the cool setting, let me put it that way. Each hair dryer is different though, you, you know, if you're using like an 1800 watt, you may not be able to hit it on high. So not the most perfect blowout, but this is the struggle for me with going bigger, is finding the right tool to spread the bloom out where you don't have like a third of it's looking great and then the rest of it has no cells, no lacing, none of that. So I am finally getting the hang of this little guy and I need to practice more with the Yeho, but it makes me feel so happy to even have this much coverage um, at this point. So what I'm doing here is trying to catch some spaces where there's still cell activator that I can gently blow across that color and extend the bloom a little bit. So when you do this, you need to be very gentle with your blowing because otherwise you can just blow right down into it and totally mess up everything. Whereas you could really spin this out and see what I just did there. You could really spin this out and it'll be okay. So um, at this point, I'm just really trying to maximize what I've already got on the surface before we embellish it a little bit. And I'm dragging my hair right into it, which is awesome. So you can see that I'm being very, very careful about how I blow it. And then we'll take a coffee stir stick and we'll, you know, we'll move, move some things around. Uh, it's definitely off center, so I'm trying to move that a little bit more toward the top or to the right now that we've twisted it around. But you have to be careful when you do that, that your whole design is moving. If not, your, your cells are just going to fold over on each other and become real weird. So at this point, I just decided, you know what, go ahead and just embellish what you have. Um and then do a spin and see where where it goes. So at this point, I'm using the narrow pointy end of the coffee stirring stick. I like to use those because the top part is broader. So if I want to have like wrecking lines or something that are more distinct, I can use that. And the bottom is like, you know, about three times the point size of a toothpick. So um, you can embellish a little bit and it's, you know, a little bit more small detail. But I love the colors on this one. I really, really do. So now while I'm trying to figure all that out, I still have quite a bit of cell activator in the middle. So I'm just using that turkey baster to break the surface tension. Again, that's all you want. You don't want to blow down into it. You just want to, you know, puff, puff, puff just a little bit, break the surface tension. 
then let it develop while you're doing other things and you'll see cells are going to start to develop they're already developing there in the middle and um it just helps the cells that are already trying to form come through so now I'm just taking some places where we may not have a lot of movement, like right there in the middle, and we're just trying to create some design. So if that happens to stay on the surface, it doesn't look super weird. One of these, I overly curly cued it and I really hated the way it looked. I think it's in that big white spot. And that's what I end up trying to <laughs> spin off or tilt off like a whole lot but I mean this is our learning process it's so it's right to the left if you're looking at it it's to the left it's just it's a little over the top compared to everywhere else so you'll see that I'm like oh I need to get this off <laughs> or at least get it to the edge see how I just pointed to it I'm like ah get it off of there or at least you know make it where it's not the focal point that's really the issue for me is it's the first place my eye wants to rest, and that's not the idea. And so you can tell I tried to make it a little less like a little bowling ball, um, but it was still just very noticeable. So, but I'm still at this point really excited because this is one of my larger blooms. It's not a complete flop. So this testing of the Valspar turns out to be um, kind of a double win for me. So um, while I'm trying to tilt this off, I will say I would like to try the Valspar and mix in a little golden regular gel gloss like I like to do. Um, I think it would even help stabilize the, the cells even more. Um, I've gotten to where I do that kind of on a regular basis. So I may do that in the future, but for the sake of this video, I wanted to make this as simple as possible because if you're going to go out and try it and that's not something that you normally do, I don't want you to think that the results that we get are completely contingent on that. That's sort of like an added perk and an added bonus. Um, another fun way to make sure your design stays in place. It's not a necessary thing. So, um, but I still have a gallon of this, so I will be using it. Um, if you had, if I had to say, do I like this one as much as the Infinity? I don't know if it's just psychosomatic. The Infinity is still my favorite, but this one is, it performs pretty much the same. So, and what they told me was that this is, this Valspar is basically just a relabeling of the Infinity. And that made me wonder because I was like, does Sherman Williams own Valspar? Because I never knew that. Apparently they acquired them. So if you didn't know that, now you know. I'm picking out that weird white cell. We're trying to blend it a little bit better. So apparently that's why some of the paints perform so similarly, um, is because they are the same company. Never knew that before this experiment. So I have not tried it with anything other than Joe Sonia. I'm not probably going to do that. I just wanted to see if my uh, fellow painting buddies could not get the infinity. Is there something that they could get that might keep them from not having that option? And so since I was already there, I did buy some infinity because they had it. Um, but I went ahead and bought a can to try this and share with you guys. So leave me a comment below. Let me know if this was helpful for you. Um, you know, let me know, can you still get the infinity where you are at your lows? Um, I have been able to find it. I know some people who have and some people who haven't. So I hope that this was a helpful comparison. If you can't get the infinity, this will work. And it's, you know, it's clear, so you're not going to have to worry about it clouding up your pigments. Um, it does work really, really well. The consistency is pretty much almost the same. So the same ratios, all that stuff. Um, that I use in my mixing video is what I used here. So I use the three parts of the Valspar to one part Josonia. And um, so yeah, I'm curious what you guys think. If you've tried it, I would love to know your thoughts if, if it's performed the same for you. So anyway, I have a close up coming up for you, but I'd love to know what you think in the comments. And if this was a helpful comparison for you, 
Again, I tried to put the um, the video in the front where you could see what the can looks like because I know most all of us are very visual. I need to see what the can looks like. So hopefully you can screenshot that. Um, but, uh, you know, if what they're telling me is correct, this is the same ingredients, same formula. It's just been rebranded and relabeled. And when I bought it, it was cheaper. So not by a lot, but... But the um, we've heard all kinds of different things. Some people have heard that the infinity is being discontinued. That's not what I was told. I was basically told that it's all um, paint shortage related. So who knows? But we went through this before <laughs> when Sherwin Williams discontinued the HGTV or whatever it was called that we all like so much. So sometimes I think it really pays for all of us to try different things so we have something to fall back on if something should all of a sudden disappear because that's, uh, I think one of my fellow artist friends said, if they keep doing this, it makes me feel like I have to learn this technique all over again with the different pouring medium. And that, that can be true. Using a diff different ingredients can really shake things up. So. Um, I hope this was helpful. Again, I will link my regular mixing video in the description box below. In that video, I mix paint, pigments, prism pour, um, all kinds of things. So it should be very helpful as a resource. Just know that if you're using this, you're going to substitute this where I would use the infinity. So here comes the close up. Again, thank you so much for watching. All right, everybody, I'm really messy, but here's our close up. There's a couple of spots that I wanted to tweak, um, but overall I'm really pleased. Um, beautiful colors together. I think if I were to do this again, I kept the colors the same for the sake of consistency from that 7 inch hexagon to the 12 inch round. I like the accents of the permanent violet dark, but I think I could live without them, so I might have either put just a larger puddle of that salmon gum down. But I do like where there's a little accent of pink in there, so I don't know. This is what I'm not wild about is where you have a random kind of purple measle. It's really kind of a cell, but anyway, I love the Australian sky blue. And I like how it plays with that blue-black cell activator and the glass wings and the salmon gum and the cypress and the phthalo turquoise. I just think those are beautiful colors together. And um, so far, this is a good alternative, I think, to the Infinity. So if for some reason we do have difficulty getting that, I think that this will work as a great medium. However, I have been adding a little bit of golden regular gel gloss to my mix, kind of on the regular now. And I think that that would even make this even better. So sorry about my hands, but this is, I kind of just added in, um, either to my whole mix or I add it into pigments or fluid paint that needs to thicken up a little bit. But my most recent batch, I just put in my Josonia first and I put a little bit in the Josonia, mixed it up really good and then added the Infinity in. So I think this mix would work great with that little extra gel gloss, but it worked well for this mix. If you follow my channel, you know that I've been working on going bigger. So this is one of my biggest blooms I've done that I don't want to scrape. So super happy about that. 12 inches is pretty big for me, especially because me and the hair dryer have not always had a good relationship. So, but I think our cell structure would be even more awesome with the little touch of gel gloss. I'm a little concerned about these pools of cell activator, which is that's just a bad blow on my part like this part is great but sometimes these pools don't dry well but this atelier cell activator dries very nicely like if this was lamp black which I do love I would be a lot more concerned about that but because this is a heavier body it's probably gonna dry really nicely this little guy will look great under resin so thanks again for watching my experiment and um, I'll post a short once it's resined of course Take care, everyone. Bye.